Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So we're cracking on with videos that you guys have requested and we've got for this one. Now, a few months ago, I did a video showing the AGS 37 using its jammer pod. Let me just um, get in here. We've got this one here, the uh, the most contemporary, the U22A jammer pod. And I used it against an SA10 SAM system to see if it had any effect in the frontal cone of 120 degrees, basically jamming the SAM side. Did it have any effect when I used it and when I didn't use it as to when the SAM system fired at me and as to when the SAM system locked on to me in terms of mileage from us to the SAM, assuming that we were traveling uniformly from us to the SAM. The answer at the end of it is it had zero effect on the SA10 SA SAM system. Now I've got a lot of YouTube comments I remember from you guys saying well that's because uh, you didn't pair up the jammer with its contemporary counterpart in terms of SAM but I re double checked and it turns out I did. This U22A was put into service in 1995 and the SAM, the SA10 S300S or P, I forget which one we've got, but we've checked, and it was 1989 that was put into service. So this is actually six years later than the SA10 that we have in DCS. So they are, it is, a, or it was a contemporary comparison, and it just didn't work. So I spoke to my vegan advisor, AJ, who knows just about everything about this, and we were talking about the different bands that this works in, and he knows all sorts of stuff about this. And But the fact is, it just doesn't matter because DCS as far as I'm aware and self admittedly simply doesn't model jamming to that extent. All jammers are simply noise creators and should have an equal effect on any receiving antennae in the DCS world. Let me know if I'm wrong but I'm pretty sure that that's how I was told it's been designed which you know makes sense. So that's that. Uh, bringing us to today you've asked me to do a similar comparison this term in terms of navel. Can it jam if you like affect uh, naval ability. So now we've got a similar test here. We've got our Vigan, and he is 75 miles away, just to give it plenty of time to a uh, cruiser, which is the Moskva, the Moscow. And this Moskva is going to lock me up with its tracking radar and shoot me down. Now, in terms of contemporary timelines, it's not perfectly contemporary, but it's not far off. 1995 for the U22A and early 2000, I believe was the Moskva. So we're five years out here, but I'm pretty sure that's not going to make any difference anyway. So I'm going to fly towards this uniformly to make it scientific. I'm going to have uh, fart, fart control on and I'm going to have my hood on, hard on. I'm going to fly towards it, first of all, without the U-22 on. Then I'm going to fly towards it with the U-22 on. We'll see at what range it locks me in a track and at what range it can fire at me. Thinking about it logically, uh, as this is a jammer, the range that it fires at me is probably not going to differ because at that point it would have burnt through anyway. But certainly we're interested in the distance at which it can track me. That's the thing that really should be affected by our frontal cone jammer. Now, because I couldn't get any results using this against the SA-10, I don't think we're going to get any result at all. I just don't think this thing works properly, or at least against the contemporary units uh, that I, I think we should be using them against. So we'll give it a go and see what happens. Uh, as ever, I don't really know. I'm just testing it out for you guys. So let's get on with it. We've got Harge on now. Let's put AFK on. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, the reason we're so far out is just to make sure it is a perfectly fair test, make sure that cruiser gets plenty of time to lock on to us. Okay, we're going to skip forward now from previous experience. I know it's going to be about 30 miles without the jammer it locks on, so let me just skip forward, make sure it hasn't locked on to me by then. In fact, I've got to be from the cockpit because it tends to nudge off course for some reason. Okay, we're kind of getting in the range now where it can start tracking us. Double check it's off. Everything's okay. We're just going to speed it up a little bit until it tra starts tracking us. Stop. So that is... Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Twenty eight point five miles. Okay, now we want to see when it fires at us. We could sort of just about see it there, so we should see the smoke trail when it fires. There was a missile. And let's see what that was. Let's 
So it's fired at mm, 26.8 miles. So pretty much as soon as it got to track, it fired. Right, so that's that. Now we're going to turn our jammer on and try it again. That on. AFK on. We're going to go to B and K. That is B and K. So we should be actively jamming now. So let's skip to about 30 miles out again. Okay, 31 miles. Let's see what happens. So we are at exactly the same 28.5 miles. Hey, it hasn't fired yet. There's a missile. It did seem to take him longer to fire this time. Uh, so we've got 25.13. Let me check what that was last time. Last time it was 26.8. So that is 1.7 miles different. So mm, maybe, uh, maybe that had a small effect. That missile has... No, it's only just fired. Uh, we better repeat the experiment to make sure it's repeatable, so let's go try it again. Double check we're turned on. We are, and this guy tells us, because he's not flashing, that we are indeed emitting. That's a nails. That's a spike. So it might be a slightly bit more accurate this time. 27.8, so you know what we're, you know, 1.0.8 miles out from last time or something. Let's see when it fires. Maybe to be more accurate, we should just watch the ship. Boomy. It is 25.3 miles. That is pretty much or almost identical to what we got last time, 0.2 seconds out. So we can keep repeating that. The spike distance is the same every time. We've had a variance of about 0.8 miles. The distance fired without the jammer was 26.8 miles in the first run and uh, 25, just over 25 miles with the U22A on. So it looks like it does have an absolutely tiny amount, you know, kind of a couple of percent amount of effect but nothing that's actually going to ever be any use I think would agree so at the end of that to me it hasn't really I mean a, a tiny marginal effect at least on the distance that this guy can fire at us which I still think is pretty you know it's a pretty decent test so this thing isn't really any use let me know what you think from the, those results and again bearing in mind in which this, this kind of simplistic way in which we believe this to be modeled in DCS other than that hope that was useful see you later